Hey guys, welcome to The Outgroove. It's me, your host, Andres Salazar. And today, a special episode, we're gonna talk about Failure's third album called Fantastic Planet. This was a request by one of you wonderful watchers, potentially patrons, I'm not sure. Uh, you guys can comment below and say, hey man, I want you to review this album, check it out. And guess what? I did it. So I went and checked out Failure, Fantastic Planet. Uh, one of you guys, can't remember his name, uh, was like, this is my favorite album ever. Go listen to it. So I'm like, okay. So I did it. So here we go. And I've got my uh, Stetson brand new, uh, was it Royal Deluxe Open Road. There you go. In color of sage. Uh, so Failure. Uh, this album came in 1996. This is their third album. They came out around the same time as Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Soundgarden, all those guys, Stone Temple Pilots. And uh, they're L.A. based, though. And uh, first things first, I so what's interesting is this album was their third album. Then they disbanded after this. And then they weren't heard of again from 90. 96 to 2013 kind of came back together which is a good amount of time it's like 20 years and uh and then i think they have a couple albums after that so one in 2018 and then another one i think maybe last year so they're still in the game uh what do i think of failures fantastic planet well um it is it's interesting it's got this grunge feel to it uh, but there's some layers of other things as well. There's some atmosphere. There's a little bit of like uh, electronic sound things happening in there as well. It's it's kind of an interesting. It's like before new metal, perhaps. I'm not sure, but I mean, clearly the first couple albums were. Um, this album sounds like Nirvana mixed with a little bit like Radiohead or something. It, it's very fascinating. I really like the first track. So let's just go through some of the tracks and talk about it. Um, I really like this. It has a great like hook and chorus. This first song called uh, Saturday Savior. Um, Sergeant Politeness is good, but it's not quite as memorable as that first track. That first track really hit me. I'm like, oh, I like this. This is kind of cool. I'm digging. I'm digging this first uh, this first song. Uh, then there's these segues, these little like uh, transitional songs, and those are kind of instrumental. Segway one, two, and three. I like those a lot. There you really get a sense of one of the creators, uh, I think his name was Ken. He uh, has done some soundtrack work uh, in, in the most recent future or recent past. And um, you can feel that, you can sense that. It does have some soundtrack elements. Again, a little bit more of that Radiohead kind of atmosphere, textures and flavors and layers are on there. And I actually like those a lot. I would like to hear just an album of different, those segue kind of, that kind of score type work. Um, reminding me a little bit of Matmos. You know, Matmos did some of that like atmospheric experimental stuff, which I dig. So I was feeling those. Um, Smoking Umbrellas is okay. Pillowhead. Pillowhead really sounds like Nirvana. The, the singer has a bit of a Kurt Cobain kind of flavor to it. Um, Dirty Blue Balloons, Daylight. This album is long, actually, and I feel that's a bit of a detriment. It's an hour and seven minutes. Today's records, 45 minutes or so, that's a good album, you know? Nowadays, we're getting things even as short as like 30 minutes, which is kind of lame. But an hour and seven minutes, it's like a double LP, that's pretty hardcore. And I felt like some of those songs were very similar to the others or it was just hard to kind of distinguish those out. Now, I listened to this one time. I didn't listen to it multiple times and I probably will listen to it at least one more time. Perhaps over multiple uh, listens, I can kind of like distinguish the different songs and kind of feel like there's a reason why those are in there. But I just wonder if, you know, there's like 17 tracks, something like that. I wonder if you could just take out a couple just to kind of like make it a little bit more digestible. Um, but overall, I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, Failure is, is a band. For some reason, I've never heard of them. I don't know how that kind of dropped off my radar. I think because at the time, uh, everything was so focused on Seattle and those bands. And I was a huge fan of Pearl Jam and Nirvana and that stuff that I feel like the LA stuff, the LA scene was just overshadowed and 
and I just never, it never came up to the kind of radio play kind of consciousness of mainstream that I was aware of. So I didn't hear it, but I'd, I actually would be curious to listen to some of their other albums, maybe their first album, and kind of see if there's a, some evolution there between the first album and then this one, Fantastic Planet. Uh, I liked it. I didn't love it. I give this a... Um, I give this two and a half to three. I'll give it a three biscuits. A little generous today. I'm going to give it three biscuits. I liked it. I would like to go through it again and kind of like really dive into it. But um, but it definitely felt like some inspiration from the grunge with this other layers of sound and, and texture, which I do like. So that was kind of cool. And I wonder if things like this are precursors to things like Incubus, Linkin Park, those kind of bands, which are coming in around this time, 96. So I wonder if there's a little bit of, of this is kind of coming in from that. I don't know the genealogy, but I'd be curious to see that. Thanks a lot for watching. We've got more videos coming up. I'm actually going to do the next video will be the same guy. He just requested two things. So the next one I'm going to do is called Benny Sings and his latest album. It's like a mixtape. And so I will uh, do that one next. So thanks, guys. Bye.